I fried my 3D printer board. Welcome to my nightmare, er, <clears throat> welcome to Hacker Week. Yep, that's right. During the last video on the Ducati, the part five video, if you've been following along there, I was working with the 3D printer to make a box for the LCD readout that gives me the gas gauge and a bunch of other goodies. And I was uh, in the process of trying to upload some new firmware to the board on my uh, 3DP11 Hicktop printer that I put together a few years ago and I've got an auxiliary LED on the uh, the print head okay so the LED was out while I was uploading some stuff I had some things going on anyway the board was powered up plugged into power USB connected and I had the soldering iron in there because I was doing some stuff with some other wiring and you know while the thing was on I decided I'll just fix this little loose wire on the LED so I touch the soldering iron cannot believe I did this to the uh, wire going to the LED so essentially what I did was just short out the board because I've got the soldering iron plugged into 110 the board is plugged into 110 and I've totally violated the first rule of any electronics tech working on stuff at a workbench never ever ever solder on the device while it's plugged in and on even if it's on battery power just don't solder on it while it's operating stupid but shit happens and you know i'm only human i make mistakes i'm not perfect i don't know everything and i don't do everything exactly right all the time i screw up too so anyway got another board uh of what happened by the way it was just totally blew off a little smd surface mount device on the board and I couldn't figure out what it was. I even tried finding the traces and just putting a jumper wire on it for the shits of it to see what would happen. Nothing happened. It didn't power up at all. What it killed was the Y-axis stepper motor drive. The board would power up and run and all the other drives would run. I could operate them but the Y drive went out. So I did a little looking around on Amazon. I found another board that's virtually an identical board. I'll show you in a minute. Same form factor, almost exactly the same layout. The components are a bit different, but the plugs are all in the same places and it should fit right on here just fine. And it was only 28 bucks shipped, so not bad. Um, even if the board doesn't work right, I'm only out 28 bucks, not a big deal. There were other boards available that were better upgrades that were like 50 bucks and had some uh, better heat sinks on the MOSFETs, things like that, but I decided not to go for that just yet. There's some other things I'm gonna do to this printer while I'm at it. Um, one of those being the carriage underneath here that, that holds the print uh, bed is made out of sheet metal and it's notorious for being pretty wimpy on these uh, HIC printers. Hick top, it's just a weird thing to say. Because I grew up with hick being a derogatory term. Anyway, the 3DP11 sounds so much more professional. So on my 3DP11, anyway, the uh, the part that holds the print board is pretty wimpy. Let's go over here to the digital scale and I'll show you something I built. Okay, here's the original um, carriage holder thingy, whatever. It's the plate that goes on the... Um, the y-axis moves back and forth so the print bed goes on top of this with some spring mounted little screw thingies and uh, let's see there's a linear bearing goes there and there and there was only one on this side I guess the theory is is that if it cocks a little like this with just one it won't bind up but hey if you get these two rods the y rods parallel it should be okay you could put Two on that side so that's what I'm gonna do I've ordered those a couple more linear bearings or pillow blocks as they're called also but this thing tends to do this weird warpy thing as the bed warms up it radiates heat down here and it actually twists and the weak points right here 
there's not much metal going on. This is where the um, the the belt drive goes. But this is just such a minimal amount of metal right here. It's definitely a weak point. You know, any chain is only as good as the weakest link. Well, there's the weakest link. So I decided to make another one of these. I've got some aluminum here that's about, um, I guess it's about four millimeters thick, eighth of an inch, pretty good stuff. So I've already drilled all the holes in this, traced off from there, and you'll see I've got a place for four linear bearings this time. Drilled a couple extra holes just to lighten it up. And you know what? This is the cool part. Check this out. Let me turn on my uh, little digital scale here. Let's make sure it's all zeroed out. I'll put the um, the stock piece on. It weighs 256 grams. Now here's the aluminum piece, which doesn't flex even a little bit. Guess what? It weighs 241 grams. So that is some awesome engineering right there. This is going to work out a whole lot better, and it weighs less which is really cool because it's reciprocating mass. It's the y-axis moving back and forth. Every time this stops and has to come back the other way, the belt and the stepper motor has to overcome inertia of motion. There are adjustments built into the, the firmware in the configuration H. Um, and also on the screen, you can actually uh, adjust this setting called the y-jerk, x-jerk, z-jerk. and it's basically what happens when it gets at the end of the stop how quickly it stops and comes back in the other direction so if it does it too quickly and you've got a lot of jerking going on it can mess up the way your print comes out because you know it's it's gonna shake everything a bit and it can get a little bit off but this is gonna go on there and that's gonna be a huge huge improvement this board fits right where the other one did exactly the same form factor. All the screws tightened up. Now we can start plugging things in. I labeled everything before I pulled it off because it would just make it a whole lot easier going back together, I figured. Um, so let's start putting things back on. EXP1 and 2, these are for the LCD. One thing about this board I read on Amazon was to check all of the solder joints on the back. Someone actually had one that had two contacts bridged for the thermistor, which is not a good thing. It didn't really hurt anything, but uh, what it did was cause the uh, the readout for the thermistor to be constantly at maximum. So let's see, this is my main power in right here on this guy. So there's the negative. Make sure we get the polarity right. This uh, has a fused, um, Let's see, then where are they? Right there and right there, there's fuses, and there's also, I guess, a resettable, self-resetting circuit protection as well. Uh, this is Z minus. That goes right there. Now we're done. Now I can put all of the bed stuff back together. Okay, uh, didn't get the other linear bearing for this side, but I can always install it later. So for now, I'm just going to go ahead and get started putting my new hotbed carrier plate back on. Pretty easy to install, just um, set it down here onto the linear bearings and drop in some screws. And that's about all there is to it. Get them tightened up and we can move on from there.
okay, that slides back and forth pretty good. No binding of any sort, so I'll go ahead and tighten all these down a little more. Check it one more time, and then give them a final torque. There's a little bit of play built into these anyway, and that's why I'm thinking four of them are going to be better than just three. Now we'll get the screws that hold the uh, the Y belt holder in place. I'm going to print a new one of these. I've got an improved version of it, a file with a, a much better version than this one. And I'll print one of those once I get this thing back up and running and replace this. And that is that. Well, that's mounted up. Now we can put on the hotbed. Okay, the hotbed has springs that allow you to adjust its level. I found the easiest way to do this is put the springs on, put the screws through, put some lock nuts on them so they stay there, and then put the thing onto the carrier like this sideways so that you don't have to deal with trying to keep the springs from falling. I want to get this wire plugged in and I also want to have this other wire for the thermistor, the temperature sensor. I want that to be outside of one of these little spring thingies. Okay, I've got them all adjusted so that the bolt is flush with the bottom of the nut. left now is to plug this in and we're ready to rock cool something I noticed about this board too is the LCD let me pan up a little bit here the LCD doesn't light up when I move the board back and forth when I power the uh, the Y Stepper motor, the other board when I did that, would actually back feed through and power up the uh, LCD. So this has evidently some circuit protection going on with that, with some diodes, I guess, and keeps that from happening. I guess that's a good thing. Um, let's see, I think we're ready to plug this in and see if my firmware flash that I did worked okay and that we have an operational board let's get some power on here and see what we get and I have no power going to the LCD great we're off to an awesome start okay um, well the board's powered up so I had read somewhere that some of these boards, you have to swap around the plugs for the LCD. They're actually labeled differently. So let's try that. First let's power it down just to make sure. Let's try it again. I still got nothing. That's rather disappointing. Hmm, well, let's do a little troubleshooting here. So I stumbled upon this before, and it rang a bell, so I just did a Google search, and here we are. And it's somebody with the same problem I have. And, well, they're kind of, they're asking about what's going on with all this, and why it's happening, etc., etc. Anyway, so if we scroll down... Somebody mentions they have that board and you just cut holes in the LCD ribbon connector slots and then flip the wire 180. And somebody else says same thing. They had the same problem, flipped them, worked fine. This guy then says, you guys are great. Thanks for all the ideas. Swapping them on EXP1 and EXP2 did the trick. So here we are with a couple of these cables that I was staring at going, gee, you know, I wonder if they were just put together wrong. And I'll bet they are, and I'll bet that's going to work on this one. I'm going to try it. I'm going to pop this all apart. I mean, you got to cut it. 
Uh, maybe I can figure out a way to just glue it all back together. But I'm going to flip the wires 180, put it back together and see what we get. All right, all right. This is definitely hack week territory here. For sure. It's a little bit of hardware hacking. I don't think I've ever pulled one of these apart intentionally. But um, it would sure be nice if I could reuse this little cap. So, <clears throat> are they glued? I don't know. I've never tried to tear one apart. Let's see if I can do this without poking a hole straight through my hand. Oh, look. That pops up. That's awesome. Okay. This one is nicely hinged. And now on the floor. Okay. Hello. All right. Are we off? We're off. I'm going to unplug it, too. I'm going to just get all kinds of extra precautions after that last totally screwed up thing I did. Oh, okay, this is where it gets fun. There's a second. Oh, there's a second part that pinches it in place. Wow. Yeah, oh, well. That's what screwdrivers were for. Shoving into slots and twisting. Yep. There it is. One side. Oh, there's the other. It, and it broke. It, there's like, yeah, something broke. But whatever. We can put that back together. All right, I gotta get my glasses for this. My superpower glasses. Whoa. Okay. I used to be able to see okay. Yep. There was a time when I was the guy in the shop. People would come up to me with little tiny letters on things and go, Hey man, what's this say? And I could tell them. <laughs> and now I'm wearing... Now I'm wearing dollar store freaking reading glasses, but it's okay, I can see. Still. So I just gotta peel this off and go 180 with it. But um, I'm just looking ahead of time to see how to line it up. Wow. It's a pretty precise thing going on here. Gotta be in just the right spot. All right, so there we go. How about 180? And we move away from those previous holes because they're just not gonna work anymore. And, uh, wow, these things are wild. They're like two little knife blades next to each other, and each one of these wires lines up with that little V slot, like, you know, the screwdriver being in the wire. It's like that. And then they squish down in there. <clears throat> well, great, what am I got to back up the video now and make sure I know which way I got the, yeah, okay, they were poking through this way. As is evidenced by the little mountains in the plastic they created. Okay. So the trick is to squeeze it hard enough to shove it into your finger. <laughs> yeah, it's probably not a good idea. Um, yeah, so just got to line it up. Get this on top of it, I guess. Put a squeezing device, like, i.e., a pair of pliers. Nice. Maybe channel locks, nice parallel squeezing power, and just <laughs> pinch it together and see what happens. Kind of like when you're making Ethernet cables. It's like <laughs> like rolling the dice in Vegas, baby. Is it gonna work? I don't know. Let's go. Oh, oh, sneak eyes. No, let's throw a freaking seven here. Happen to have a pair of needle nose by nearby. Let's just let's just see how easy it squeezes. Maybe they'll work. It's a little weird. I don't know. <laughs> no idea what I just did. Well, I guess it lined up in the right spot. It sure looks good when I peek in there. I guess all I can do is plug it in and try it. But I gotta do this to the other one too, still. And it looks like it'll stay unless I pull it apart. Okay, one down, one to go. This one stayed together a little bit better. Got little pins that I managed to hang on to by prying it up a little on each side instead of all on one side. So this one will probably stay together just fine. This one, however, is going to need maybe a little melty help from a soldering iron. Okay, got my Weller 
heated up. Yeah. Portable latent heat soldering with plastic at a theater near you. All right, let's plug in the next one. All right, plugging it in and seeing what happens and stuff. All right, plug back in. What's the freaking LCD gonna do? Hot damn. That is freaking awesome. I may just rename this video how to fix your crazy ass screwed up board from China. That'll work with enough hacking. Aha. Uh -huh. Recognize the X switch that time. And looks like the sensor is working. Okay, good. It should home right there. All right, let's disable motors and see where we ended up. Let's see, go to prepare and disable steppers. And I can move the bed around. And wow, right now it's clearing by just just about right, actually. Holy crap! <laughs> that is amazingly uh, level already just off the hardware that I put on, just eyeballing the hardware, which is good. That tells me that that carrier was worth building. It's a much flatter plane now that doesn't uh, flex around nearly as much as it used to. It feels really solid. I just use this blue painter's tape that's two inch wide. Um, it says it's made for delicate surfaces and it's just, it's not so much crepe as it is a real smooth tape. So it's not wrinkly and it holds up pretty well to the heat I've been using this since day one pretty happy with it all it takes is a little bit of hairspray on it and you're good to print a little Aquanet hairspray raise that Z up put on a pair of gloves with leather on the fingers and just wipe all the extra stuff off from that hot end helps a lot easy trick to do that so the hot ends up to 234 already trying to shoot for 240 over here on the bed we're still stuck at 74 shooting for 105 the current going to the bed on this thing is pretty lacking I think it it takes a while before it gets really hot it's a lot of area though and if it's only got like 12 volts and uh, yeah, do the math. Anyway, once I get this thing printed and see that it looks okay, I may tweak it a little bit more. But right now, the it, it looks like it's doing just fine. And you know what? It's a really clean looking print. It could be closer to the bed in the first layer. I can see it. It looks like a nice roll of toothpaste kind of coming out now instead of a little bit flattened out, which I think is the best way to lay the first layer down. Anyway, Later, I'm going to print out that Y. Well, I think that about wraps it up on the 3D printer. It's up and running again. Learned quite a few things along the way about the board, Marlin firmware, and all of the fun stuff in the configuration H that there is to mess around with and make your printer work better or really screw it up big time. <laughs> Uh, anyway, let's see. The next mods I'm going to make to this will probably be putting on the the glass bed, the borosilicate bed. Um, I tried out the PEI real quick. It wasn't that crazy about it. I'd rather do this. It's nice and flat, removable, cool it off, parts pop right off. From what I've heard, that's the way to go. And there's a couple different ways to still get the auto bed leveling to work. I'm going to experiment with a couple ideas I have on that and um, in a future video. We'll explore that a little bit more. In the meantime, the printer's working fine. Getting my part printed for the Ducati so I can finish that video. And uh, I guess that's about it. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Be sure to like and share. And until next time.